All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Man, the Niners special teams are starting to look pretty special, and we'll talk about it coming up next. Pig and a Pickle is the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle. The best barbecue you'll find in all of Northern California. It's all good. The brisket, the brisket chili, uh, the pulled pork, the barbecued chicken, the house-made sausages. Phenomenal restaurant. Go say hi to Damon and Mary. Uh, tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video is also brought to you by Mojo Fantasy. I'm loving Mojo Fantasy. Check that link in the description and use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. And everybody who does it automatically is in the running to win a BOSA or a Purdy jersey. We have yet to give those away, and we will. So anybody who signs up at Mojo Fantasy and use the promo uses the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, um, they may, and make your first deposit, they will match you up to your first $100, and you're automatically in the running for a BOSA or a Purdy jersey jersey of your size um it's not like we have one that we are giving away and it's like it could be whatever size you it's gonna be personally ordered to fit you so make sure you sign up at mojo fantasy all right let's talk a little bit about the niners special teams unit you know the old saying is football is three phases of the game there's offense there's defense and there's special teams and you can win the game in any phase and you can lose the game in any phase and they're the niners special teams at times in the past have been a liability. There have been times where um, their special teams was far from special. Heck, when they beat Green Bay in Green Bay and Jordan Willis had that tipped ball that Hafanga came away with and it was the key play in that game, that was a rough year for the 49ers special teams unit under Richard Hightower. Um, and now they get a different special teams coordinator. Uh, Schneider is a veteran of the special teams battles. Um, and their special teams, they've they've now committed to the special teams. They've actually spent money and draft choices and invested capital and time uh, developing their special teams unit. And it shows. It really does show. Now, I'll fully admit, freely admit, that I don't like the idea of drafting a kicker in the third round. And when the Niners drafted Jake Moody in the third round and they had Robbie Gold already on their roster and Gold was... 38 for 38 in the playoffs as a field goal kicker and you and you said goodbye to him and you drafted a kicker with a third round draft choice i was like everybody else yelling what the hell what's going on here but jake moody after a, after some early hiccups has been very very consistent and he hit a big field goal on thursday night so that's one two i did not love when they invested a fourth round pick in the punter mitch wishnowski but man this week on my things to do list down in Santa Clara, I'm going to go talk if I can find him because he's very quiet. He's a really cool guy. I've talked to him a number of times. Um, I'm going to go do an interview with Mitch Wishnowski. Mitch Wishnowski right now is doing amazing things. I love the way Wishnowski looks right now as a as a punter. Um, he has just been absolutely fantastic for the 49ers. And, you know, any way you slice it, it's like you look at Wishnowski and you say, well, you know, is he could a punter really have uh, that kind of impact? And normally I would say no, uh, you know, a punter can't have that kind of an impact. I mean, unless you're talking about Ray Guy or something like that. Uh, but Mitch Wishnowski has been a tremendous addition for the 49ers. And right now he is he is punting. Um, about as well as anybody could ever expect. I mean, he really does look good. Um, I, I think he should be a almost. He, I mean, to me, he's a borderline Pro Bowler. Um, I, I just love the way he punts. I love not just the booming leg. He does have a booming leg, but he also has great touch, and he understands how to place the ball inside the twenty with touch. In this game against Seattle Thursday night. He pinned Seattle at the six on one punt. He pinned him at the 13 on another punt. He pinned him at the two. So, you know, and he's a he he has a great at this point, it's more than just a knack. This guy's got great touch. And he he's he's got great control over his punts. 
And right now he's, he's punting at a really, really high level. And um, you know what? It, you don't think it's a big deal until all of a sudden you look up and you're like, wait a second, it is a big deal. This guy's looking great. Um, he's absolutely looking great. He's had, you know, if you look at just, you know, some of the, what he's done recently, um, you know, I mean, he, he, he's pinning teams inside their 20, um, on a regular basis. And he, he, he's been outstanding. He really has been outstanding. I mean, um, you could make an argument that he's been a pro bowl punter. So Wishnowski's a force at this point. And it, you know, if you can punt and, and stick it inside the 10, and make a t- make a team drive, you know, ninety plus yards the other way against this defense. You're going to win a lot of games that way. So I love what I'm seeing from Wishnowski. Wishnowski is is absolutely been fantastic on special teams. A couple other guys have to be shouted out for their efforts this weekend. Samuel Womack and Ronnie Bell. Samuel Womack on the ball that Wishnowski punted that pinned Seattle at their own two yard line. It was Samuel Womack who hustled down there and, you know, his momentum carried him into the end zone, but he made sure the ball didn't. And he flipped it to Ronnie bell who caught it at the two. And there you go. They downed it right there. The combination of Womack and Ronnie bell working together forced the Seahawks to have to drive, you know, 98 yards the other way. We're also seeing guys really look great on punt return or on, on punt coverage units. Ronnie Bell on the punt coverage unit had a fumble recovery of Ray Ray McLeod's fumble, or I should say of, uh, no, of the muff punt. When, um, when Seattle muffed the punt, Ronnie Bell jumped on it. I think George Odom came away with the hit. Odom, unfortunately, tore his bicep. And George Odom, by the way, last year, was number one in the NFL in special teams tackles. Unfortunately, he's on the IR now because he tore his bicep. But George Odom has been a great special teamer, and he's number two in the league in special teams coverage tackles. So it's they're going to have to go the rest of the way without him. But the, once again, the Niners put their money where their mouth was. They didn't just say, oh, you know what? Special teams is important to us, but we're not going to invest anything in it. They invested money, significant draft or significant dollars, on the cap and going out in free agency, finding George Odom, uh, bringing him in and utilizing him as part of their punt coverage team. And he's been fantastic. Um, Pro Bowl, all pro type special teamer. So as I said, they're going to have to go the rest of the way with no George Odom. But Ronnie Bell had a fumble recovery on the punt coverage unit where I believe Odom got in there. And um, that was a huge play. Absolutely huge play. So that was great to see. And then Oren Burks on the ball that Ray Ray McLeod fumbled on that punt return. Oren Burks was Johnny on the spot and he fell on the football and he recovered the fumble. And so it could have been hugely costly turnover on the road on special teams on a, on a punt return. Instead, Oren Burks popped onto the football and no harm, no foul and picked up Ray Ray. So all of those were great special teams plays. But the one that I have to highlight here, because it stood out, and it really stood out, and I love this player. I've talked to him a couple times uh, this year already, and I talked to him a few weeks ago, Darrell Luter Jr. I'm going to share the screen on this one, and we'll show you this play. Because, I mean, Luter, <laughs> Luter played it for the South Alabama Jaguars. And he's a press man corner who's about six foot two. He's got 33 and a half inch arms. He's going to be a really good player from scrimmage for the 49ers. And here is the play. We're going to rewind this. Um, this is this is the this is the like early in the game, first quarter. Niners are up seven, nothing. They kick off to Seattle. D. Eskridge goes 66 yards up the left sideline. And looked like he was gone. And Luter, who's barely played at all in the NFL, this is only the second game that he's ever played in the NFL, tracks him down. And uh, Eskridge runs in the four threes. So here is the play. Uh, This is an amazing play. So here we go. You've got uh, Jake Moody. He catches it at the two. 
comes down the left sideline, hits a seam. He hits the sideline, and he's gone. He is gone. Up, but he's not. Because Darrell Luter is big and fast and rangy and tracks him down. Watch it again. Here we go. Supposed to be, uh, looks like, looks like a left kickoff return. Eskridge has got great speed. Niners missed the tackle. I think it's it's Warner that misses the tackle, and Luter runs him down. And if you look at the angle on this thing, Eskridge was beyond him. Luter had to. This shows great explosiveness, amazing explosiveness, really. And then Luter just sees him. He knows if he doesn't catch him, it's seven seven. The place is going crazy, and who knows what the night's like. Instead, he you know he's six foot two. Um, great athlete, and he just runs down a guy who had the angle on him and had all the momentum. And you can see, look, he saw it. He saw it. He saw it. He knew he was the last guy. And not not only does he go down, make the tackle, but he makes sure he trips him up. And if you can see Luter coming down on the coverage, you can see how quickly he recognizes where it is. And then he pivots. Look, he's coming from the other side of the field. Luter was on the other side of the field. He wasn't even on Eskridge's side of the field. He's one of the, yeah, he's on the far side. He's up here on the top right. He comes all the way down, tons of speed, sees the guy, takes an angle. He's on the far outside on the other side. And shoestring, touchdown saver. That's huge. From one side of the formation, to the to a return coming on the other side, and nobody. Hey, let's let's pause this for a second. Nobody right here would say that Luter on the far side of the field needs to make this play. When they when Brian Schneider goes and has the meeting the next day and talks about this play, and he's yelling at guys for, "Hey, we got to make this tackle." He ain't yelling at Darrell Luter. No, he's not. He's not yelling at the guy who's up here in the top corner, right up there. He's not yelling at that guy. <laughs> you know, when, when the, when Eskridge gets on, gets, goes down the other sideline, you could make an argument that Darrell Luter is the last guy who should have made this tackle, but he's running, he's running, he's running, he's running. He sees Eskridge. Boom. He switch, switches his angle. Now he's got to run through the trash. Now he's got to chase him down from behind. Boom. Does it. What an athlete. That was a big time play. That was, that was a big time play. That was the, that's an all desire kind of a play. That's like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not letting my team down. You think he's gone for the touchdown? Seattle sidelines going crazy. They're putting their hands in the air. This guy off to the sideline behind Pete Carroll's like hands are already up. Like it's a touchdown. This guy saves a would-be touchdown from the far side of the field. (laughs) This is a beautiful play, man. I could watch this one all night. Look at the guy in the sideline with the green, hands up in the air. And they didn't get a touchdown, did they? They got a field goal. Huge play in the game. If Eskridge takes that to the house at 7-7, the place is rocking. And who knows what kind of game this is going to be. Instead, Luter says, uh, no. Great desire. Great play. Loved it. Maybe my favorite special teams play of the year right there. Is is Luter going to get yelled at by Brian Schneider if Eskridge goes to the house? Nope. There he is, though, on the backside. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Time it. Perfect. Boom. To the ground. And they didn't score the touchdown, did they? And the Niners go on for a convincing win. So um, great play by Darrell Luter. Great play by the 49ers special teams. And once again, you know, if we go into the special teams, Jake Moody, Darrell Luter, Mitch Wisnowski, Ronnie Bell, uh, Oren Burks, Ray Ray McLeod, Samuel Womack, lots of guys making plays. George Odom, lots of guys making plays. Group effort. But they one group effort. Two, Darrell Luter Jr. is going to be a player. To be that big, that fast, that long, that athletic, 
Um, and he's a mature kid. He's married with his own child. There says that his, his wife and his child are living out here with him on the West Coast. He's loving the Bay Area. Um, I think this kid can play from scrimmage. At South Alabama, the Jaguars played him up on the line of scrimmage. They, they used him as a press man corner. Um, I think that he can play man-to-man. So I think that's one of the reasons they drafted him. He can play man-to-man coverage. But look for Darrell Luter on, on uh, scrimmage at corner at some point. Uh, him and Womack, I think, have proven the last couple of weeks that they're athletic and they're ready to roll. So great to see. But the 49ers special teams unit, a third of the game, special teams, and Luter right there with maybe one of the best special teams plays you're going to see. All right, thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. And thanks to Mojo Fantasy for sponsoring this video. And thanks to all you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.